I get a lot of terrific video ideas and I'm really interested in this one, which is will a gasoline engine run off of hand sanitizer? Now imagine you're married to a germaphobe and you're driving your spouse's vehicle and unfortunately it runs out of gas in the middle of nowhere. Fortunately, as a germaphobe, your spouse happens to have some hand sanitizer in the vehicle. Could you just add some hand sanitizer to the fuel tank to get you to a fuel station or are you stuck? Well, we're gonna do some testing day and find out just how well hand sanitizer works as an alternative fuel. So let's get the testing underway and see how this is gonna work. The first time I've ever looked at a safety data sheet for hand sanitizer was this time and I was really surprised at what I saw. This is straight from the Clorox company. This does not include bleach. Obviously you don't wanna burn anything that's chlorinated. Obviously, hand sanitizer is meant to be used on the hands, on the skin. However, the safety data sheet warns against this, saying if on skin or hair, take off immediately all contaminated clothing, rinse skin with water. So it's very interesting the safety data sheet warns not to put this on your skin, even though that's what the product is intended to be used for. Also, dispose of all contents in accordance with all applicable federal, state, and local regulations and it talks about some inhalation hazards and finally it talks about the mixture consists of ingredients of unknown toxicity so what's the magic ingredient that causes the hand sanitizer to kill 99.9 .9 percent of all germs it's the ethanol 65 to 75 percent in this product as well as some isopropyl alcohol between 5 and 10 percent you can find out a lot more information about each chemical in this product by looking up these cast numbers online and get a lot more information so the flash point of the hand sanitizer that we're going to be testing is minus 21 degrees Celsius. So most hand sanitizers come in the form of a gel, and, and obviously that's not going to work inside of any engine, but there are a lot of hand sanitizers that actually come in the form of a liquid. So I went ahead and purchased the Clorox bleach-free hand sanitizer, which is just that. It's a liquid, and it has very low viscosity, so this should flow through the carburetor of the engine just fine. In a previous video, we used head and shoulders as engine oil in this small engine, now, right after the engine seized, about 10 minutes later, I was able to get the engine to spin over. But after sitting and cooling off, this engine is extremely stiff. So what I have to do before we use this engine is clean it up real well. I'm going to have to use some sort of penetrating fluid inside the cylinder to loosen things up. As well as inside the crankcase, I'm going to go ahead and use some automatic transmission fluid to hopefully free everything up and get this engine running. And then we'll go ahead and begin our test to see if hand sanitizer is going to work as an alternative source of fuel. So just how stuck is this engine? I've got a torque adapter. This is an AC Delco. I've got a lot of questions on this. I picked this up off of Amazon. It's just a half inch AC Delco torque adapter. I'm not trying to sell this product. I'd recommend shopping around and also consider other brands. You can probably get a better price than I did. But anyway, this is set on foot pounds. I'm going to go ahead and see how much torque it takes to get this engine to spin over. Looks like 15.3, so there's a lot of resistance for an engine that does not even have the cylinder head on it. I'm going to go ahead and spray down the cylinder with some Seafoam Deep Creep. I'm going to go ahead and spin this engine over a little bit now that we've got the cylinder lubricated to see if that helps free things up a bit. Since the engine is still fairly stiff, Seafoam helped a lot, but I want to add something to the crankcase to help free it up. I was going to use automatic transmission fluid, but I think I'm going to use some Marvel Mystery Oil in the crankcase. Okay, I've had about 16 ounces, so I'm going to go ahead and spin this engine over some more to see if we can loosen it up. I'm going to go ahead and use a drill to see if I can get this engine to spin over real fast. That will allow the splice system to circulate the Marvel Mystery Oil onto all the moving parts. I'm going to run this on just gasoline for about five minutes and then drain off all the contents of the crankcase. The reason for that, when I was in the process of freeing up the engine, the intake valve was in the open position and it was stuck. So I had to work with that using some seafoam deep creep to get that intake valve to close properly. And I'm still not sure that's going to function properly, but if we can get this engine to run for just a minute, I'm sure it's going to be just fine.
So I went ahead and added some fresh oil to this engine. It should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is start up the engine and then we'll take a compression test to see the health of the engine. The hand sanitizer is almost all alcohol. In order to get alcohol to work in a gasoline engine, it requires a higher fuel flow rate than just using gasoline. Unfortunately, I don't have an adjustable jet carburetor on this engine, so probably what I'll have to do is add a choke to the carburetor to get the engine to run properly. So would I recommend using hand sanitizer as an emergency fuel substitute? Absolutely not. It did not run very well and I had a hard time getting the engine to even run. That's why I didn't even apply a load to the engine just because it was stalled out. I can say with great confidence though that the engine is 99.99% germ free. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys throwing those video ideas out there. That keeps me going and keeps the videos that I produce fun and enjoyable because you guys have some great ideas. Please keep those ideas coming and I'll keep making videos. Thanks for watching. I look forward to next time.